Good morning. Welcome. You are watching NDTV Profit. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Harsh Saita. We have with us the management of Chola Mandalam Investment and Finance to talk to us about Q4 numbers, set the con context. It's a very strong set of numbers and good growth numbers that they've clocked. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and we have with us Mr. Arul Selvan, as always, the CFO at Chola Mandalam. Uh, welcome to NDTV Profit, sir. Well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so I want to first off try and understand, you know, you've grown extremely well in FY24, 37% year over year AUM growth clocked. So I want to try and understand what the number for FY25 will be. Um, on this slightly higher base, will, will the number be slightly more tempered or are you seeing enough opportunities? No, we uh, we will be right now, uh, you know, looking at a growth of around 20 to 25 percent in the coming year. Uh, it we are we are always conservative. Uh, there are reasons to it. Uh, a large part of our business still depends on the rural economy, and until and unless uh, the monsoons uh, or you know. Uh, if you are very clear about how the monsoon settles down, there will be some impact if the monsoons are not so good or widespread. Also, election results we need to factor in. And uh, we need to see how the you know uh, overall liquidity position with regard to cost of funds, etc. also pans out. Uh, you know, there are again differing you know, signals coming from the environment by both from the federal, you know, side and thereby it will have impact on the Indian economy also, as well as RBI by itself. Uh, so both, uh, we need to see how the availability of funds at what cost may will make it business sense to grow. Because we, we believe in growing profitably, so we would not be following growth just for the sake of growth. So we need to make, uh, you know, the committed rotor levels to achieve so these factors we will certainly watch out before committing on a larger book growth. Understood, sir. And what segments uh, would you be targeting in terms of your growth? Uh, is there a predominant focus area that you see yourself growing in in FY25? Yes, uh, as a percentage wise, we will grow a little faster on the loan against property, home loan, and the new businesses because uh, these businesses, the loan against property and the home loan, are going uh, making inroads into other parts of the country from where they were earlier, uh, you know, operating from. So the geographical expansion would give them the traction to grow faster, as well as in the new businesses because the base is low, their growth percentages would look seemingly high, but uh, in absolute terms, like a finance would still be the largest player with regard to disbursement growth and AM growth. But overall portfolio wise, vehicle finance portfolio may come down again marginally. We have seen that it has been coming down in spite of its growth, but that is because the rest of the businesses are going faster. Understood. Uh, and sir, how quickly would you continue to uh, run down that, or rather, just in terms of mix, uh, reduce, or how would the mix shift maybe in the next three years uh, in favor of uh, loan against property and home loan as you scale geographies in those segments? Yes, uh, see, vehicle finance will come down to around 50% or my share less than 50%. The loan against property and the home loan by themselves should be in the range of around 30 to 35% of the overall AEM. And the new businesses would be constituting the balance 15%. Understood. And so, uh, new business itself has grown extremely fast while I'm focusing in more on growth at the moment. But new businesses itself, in terms of disbursements, quarter of your disbursements to new businesses um any what's the strategy here any concern with regard to you venturing into these new businesses and growing extremely fast without having uh, enough of comfort on asset quality or you're completely comfortable there so we are comfortable there. Uh, we have seen that. We have explained over a few calls over the quarters also on how we are tracking and how we are making, you know, even minor uh, corrective actions. Uh, for example, in the fintech like partnerships, which is uh, you know less than one percent of the overall book, but there are, even there we have made corrections to make sure that we don't exceed on NCLs. Uh, NCL would be our predominant focus with regard to any business we grow. So that would be. Uh, 
ആയിരുന്നു ട്രാക്ട് വെരി ക്ലോസ്ലി ആണ് വെരി ഓൺലൈൻ ബേസിസ് സോ ദാറ്റ് വുഡ് ഹെൽപ്പ് എസ് ടു കീപ് ദം ഇൻ ചേക്ക് so these businesses would continue to grow and we but vehicle finance would be still the largest business i would say even 3 years down the road understood um i'd like to talk about q4 specifically margins have come back in q4 and q they've come back decently well for you you expect uh, this kind of 7.8% kind of margin uh, to continue uh, into fy25 as well what's the thought and the guidance like yeah it will continue uh, unless something drastically goes wrong with regard to the interest rate scenario which we don't see right now while i don't subscribe that there will be any fast reduction in the interest rates i also don't see that going up drastically um, but uh, we need we need to factor in geopolitical risks if any that could you know push up oil prices push up the exchange conversions and thereby lead to interest rate hikes so we we will have to watch that but for it i think uh, nims can be comfortably held at this level so is our you know thought that as we go forward understood and uh, with regard to credit losses this time around uh, you you've delivered quite a beat in comparison to what the street was expecting uh, in on the credit loss count could you uh, talk to us a little bit more on that uh, what's led to a really decent number uh, on that count so credit loss has always been our focus as i told you a few minutes back uh, we we would be focusing on it and we have been making corrections we have been tightening our underwriting principles like, uh, you know and that why we have made in those but also you should factor in q4 we will always be a quarter where credit losses would be minimum because a lot of uh, you know push happens to reach targets etc it may move back a bit in q1 but we should be back to you know better better levels as we move forward in the subsequent uh, quarters this is a trend you will see happening uh, even pre covid if you unless uh, quarter back what understood sir uh, so with regard to you've spoken about your focus on profitability along with growth you're moving into a more secured business of housing finance of lap uh, and the like uh does that therefore dilute profitability and margins could you try and give us some context on that no the customer profile we focus on gives us a better rota so our the housing loan book which we focus on is not on the salaried class where the yields are very very fine and it is there is a lot of competition from banks our focus is on self employed non professionals who do self construction so we focus on tier 3 tier 4 cities if you see the yield on this book is above 15% and thereby if we control the losses and control the opex this portfolio can give us a very decent rota and as i was saying earlier even higher than the vehicle finance rota understood um and uh, so just in terms of margins vehicle finance versus uh, housing uh, what's the kind of margin uh, profile that that would have could you give our viewers some context on that it's like a different uh, you know between the vehicle finance itself has got a wide array of products uh, you know right from heavy commercials to two wheelers or tractors and the use segment where the yields differ almost more than 10 to 15 10 to 12 basis for uh, 10 to 12% points itself between the products for example heavies will be you know uh, dispersed at in the range of around 10 and up to 11% yield while Uh, you know on the other end two wheelers can be in the range of around 20 to 23 percent yield because uh, you know for various reasons the opex are different their losses could be different the profile is different the amount of uh, effort that has to go behind them is different so vehicle finance as a whole basket they will deliver a nim of around 7 7.5 percent <laughs> the home loan on the other end is a 14 to 15 percent yield product, and as I was saying, if we could uh, contain the opex and the MCL, it should deliver easily uh, uh, greater than 4 percent pre-tax rota. 
so I understood. Uh, so with regard to how uh, OPEX has moved, it's gone up uh, quite substantially when I'm looking at it sequentially. What exactly are you investing in? Could you give us some context on that? And therefore, where should ROAs lie as well as OPEX lie in FY25? See, the OPEX increases are on account of uh, different, uh, you know, two, three reasons predominantly. One is, uh, for example, uh, as I was saying, we were making inroads into uh, other parts of the country for loan against property and home loan. And we create separate verticals for every business with regard to sales, credit and collection. So we don't cross uh, utilize people for any of the businesses. So each business, when we grow, we bring in separate teams so that the focus remains on that particular product by these teams. So this cost has come in. The other aspect is insurance income is now being also done by us directly, which used to be done by a subsidiary earlier because we got our own agency license cleared by IRDA. So there are some cost elements associated with that, but that, that is compensated by the insurance income coming in the top line. So that would increase the OPEX a bit. Uh, our, apart from that, in third co in the last quarter, normally we, we will close out all the requirements on, uh, for example, the CSR expense, etc. And as you know, CSR expenses are to be accounted on cash payment basis. So those costs would have also pushed up the OPEX. There are certain one-time such one-time expenses. There are certain routine expenses. But broadly, the idea is to hold the OPEX to asset ratio in the range of three uh, percent. That, that's been our target. As we exceeded it this quarter, but we will uh, we have to look at it as a, on an annualized basis. Understood. And so, what does this do to ROAs? Uh, you know, they've come off by 20 bips probably because of all the rate hikes that have been priced in this year. Okay. Uh, what should that do to ROAs for FY25? Still hold above the 2.5 percent mark? Yes, we will. We, we track it more on the pre-tax. So yes, we are targeting 3.5 pre-tax, so it should be 2.5 levels uh, easily. Understood. Got it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. It's been a pleasure speaking thank you. with you. Uh, and getting all of that context. Uh, well, uh, that was, of course, the management of uh, Chola Mandalam Investment and Finance uh, on their Q4 numbers. With that, uh, out of time on this one, uh, we'll take a short break. More on the other side. Stay tuned to NDTV Profit.